Okay, I just wanted to remark these uh, key points, but um, in, the, in, the, in our web page, you have a complete and extended uh, webinar uh, where we included more information about, about it. And uh, so you have any, any comments or questions, <coughs> the presentation you, you, can, you can share with, with all of us. So I uh, will give the floor to uh, Sebastián Pantoja, who is uh, the leader of the deployment site from, from Galicia, and um, she, he will introduce uh, uh, the deployment site and, and their needs. Just an important remark, uh, we will explain all of each deployment site, and at the end of the presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask your question to each of them. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. So I'm uh, through a mobile phone because there are some issues with my computer. So, uh, well, as uh, uh, Alicia was mentioning before, uh, we will introduce the the deployment site in Galicia. Okay. So. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, deployment site is aligned with uh, ActiveH user cases, and uh, basically uh, we are, uh, let's say, using the Internet of Things in order to uh, improve or to, let's say, let uh, the older adults or the senior people to live uh, longer and better at their own homes. Okay, the, the, those are the final ideas. And the use cases that uh, we are trying here is uh, in order to demonstrate uh, uh, these uh, possibilities of, uh, of the technology. So we are six partners uh, that uh, we include on the value chain from the service provider that uh, we have Sergas uh, uh, from the health uh, uh, as a health provider. And we have uh, the Red Cross, that is the social care services uh, provider. And then uh, we're, the other partner, we are providing the technological solutions and uh, dissemination. Okay, so those, those are this is the value chain that we have here in, uh, in Galicia, uh, related with uh, the number of uh, users. We are targeting 1,600 uh, 1, users and uh, 700 homes with more than uh, 4,500 4, sensors. Okay, so that's uh, the general numbers. And if we go to the next slide, here uh, you can see uh, the technological infrastructure that uh, is divided in two parts. Uh, one is uh, more network oriented, and the other one is uh, the, the home infrastructure. Okay. It is worth to say that uh, all the solution is based on open standards. Okay. So uh, inside the home, uh, we are we have a gateway where we can develop new services. The ones we already have are related with. Uh, medical devices to provide um, uh, telemonitoring uh, capabilities. And here we are using Bluetooth uh, connectivity and X73 uh, or Continuo Alliance uh, devices are preferred. In this case, as I was mentioned, is, uh, we prefer uh, devices based on standards. Then we have, uh, let's say, the more social uh, uh, care uh, typical solution, which is the alarm trigger and the technical technical alarms that are again connected to to the uh, gateway through a uh, uh, social frequency, so it's an European standard. And then we have uh, behavioral sensors to do behavioral behavioral analysis that are connected uh, th through Zigbee. To the to the Wi-Fi or to the sorry to the gateway, okay, and those are the infrastructure that we currently have at the home. Uh, in addition, we have other uh, 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 we have other interfaces like Wi-Fi that can be used also to connect uh, additional sensors. 
Uh, then, to connect to the network, uh, again, we are based on open standards. We uh, are able to upload um, uh, medical information direct directly to the health uh, uh, record, electronic health record. Uh, here we, mm -hmm. in Galicia, we are using it uh, through CSENS and then storing the information in SOFIA. And for the social uh, services, uh, we uh, provide also uh, social care uh, formal uh, services through the Red Cross uh, um, alarm system, okay, central alarm system. Again, following the European standards. And then on top of that, uh, we will implement uh, the IOTA solution, but uh, this is, will be will be later. So here, basically, those are the the networks that are inside and outside the home. And uh, here you can see the typical devices that we are providing: scales, coagulometer, etc. And the data collection that we are taking and storing is um, is about 3.8 megabytes of information per user and per month. And those are the uh, capabilities that uh, we support here in the Galician deployment side. Okay, and I think that's, that's all from my side. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sebastian. And uh, then, uh, at the end of the, of the presentation, uh, we will receive the, the questions uh, for, your, for your deployment side. And uh, now we move to a uh, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Alicia. This is Dimitris Papagiorgiou and my colleague, uh, Sofia Seguli. Uh, we will present uh, shortly the Greek uh, deployment uh, uh, site, uh, which is, uh, as Galicia uh, uh, aligned with uh, the overall objective of Active Aids to help elderly to live uh, independently uh, without uh, additional risk, as well as to relieve uh, the formal and informal caregivers uh, in that uh, in supporting them uh, uh, daily or at least uh, as soon as uh, often they need. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the services that we provide, we actually uh, monitor. Uh, uh, some uh, data and parameters that help us to uh, provide information about the daily behavior, uh, the health uh, status or mobility partners or patterns of uh, the elderly users. The, the Greek, uh, Greek pilots uh, are deployed in three major uh, regions in Greece, uh, in Athens, Attiki region, in uh, central Greece and north Greece in the great metropolitan area of Thessaloniki. Uh, we focus on four use cases, three of them in settings, uh, in smart home uh, settings, uh, where we focus on activity monitoring uh, at home, integrated care for chronic uh, conditions or elderly, and uh, assisting persons outside home. Whereas in the mobility case, we have a separate one uh, to support uh, the transportation uh, uh, partners or patterns of uh, early users. Uh, we involve 450 uh, homes and around 1,000 users, whereas uh, con uh, the Greek, let's say, consortium consists of seven partners, including the relevant municipalities, the service providers, and the technology uh, partners. Uh, our aim is to detect uh, unusual uh, uh, behavior uh, of elderly, uh, provide uh, alerts and notifications uh, timely uh, about uh, differentiations in their uh, behavior, uh, as well as to uh, manage to reduce the number of visits uh, that formal and informal uh, caregivers pay to elderly uh, people. Uh, as a result, we aim at improving the overall quality of life of the elderly. Um, so if we can uh, uh, move to the next uh, slide, uh, this slide 
my focus is on the smart home related uh, scenarios uh, whereas there is another uh, slide that focuses on the mobility scenario um, similarly again with Galicia there is a data collection infrastructure that uh, uh, involves uh, a set of uh, IoT devices and sensors like a panic button, a motion sensor and door window sensor whereas in a uh, uh, case we also involve some uh, medical devices uh, for getting blood pressure and blood glucose uh, um, metrics uh, from uh, the elderly uh, these all, all these uh, data streams uh, are uh, aggregated in uh, uh, the gateway which is then uh, and then are sent to the uh, the server that each municipality uh, operates so that they can uh, be analyzed and uh, uh, appropriate notification or uh, information uh, can be sent either to the directly to the elderly uh, people or to uh, formal and informal caregivers uh, whereas uh, some uh, administrators may have also an overall uh, view and uh, uh, support through telephone is, can also be uh, provided. Um, this is more or less uh, the setting concerning the home, uh, smart home scenario. Uh, as you can see, uh, we provide daily behavioral monitoring the health monitoring, whereas uh, alarms and notifications are provided in case that uh, an abnormal behavior uh, is uh, uh, identified. For the next uh, scenario, the mobility scenario, we use a similar uh, setting uh, where uh, we collect uh, data from uh, um, uh, sensors like uh, Bluetooth detectors, uh, car-related data, traffic uh, uh, signs uh, data, as well as uh, there are deployed several uh, pedestrian uh, presence detectors so that we collect all this information in the, the central uh, platform uh, to monitor and analyze uh, this data. Uh, then uh, we have um, uh, the elderly who can uh, get information to help them uh, uh, plan their uh, daily trips, the mobility, so they get some uh, pre-trip related information on traffic or best routing, etc. Uh, then uh, we uh, monitor the mobility behavior by its elderly so that uh, similarly identify potential uh, unusual partners. Patterns, and uh, as a result, some alerts and notifications may uh, be sent uh, directly to the elderly uh, if, for instance, the situation in, in the traffic has changed, etc. Uh, there are also uh, a number of uh, supporting uh, uh, professionals that uh, are involved in, uh, in this uh, setting in order to uh, provide additional support and uh, in uh, some cases also the drivers of cars are uh, notified alerted in case that uh, uh, for instance uh, an elderly uh, is uh, trying to cross uh, a street uh, etc uh, this is uh, the, the overall setting of uh, the mobility scenario. Uh, it is implemented, uh, it will be implemented in two uh, locations. One is at the city center of Thessaloniki and uh, one outside uh, where the necessary uh, uh, adjustments are being made so that uh, the second uh, location will soon uh, be included in, uh, in the pilot. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's from my side. Uh, feel yeah. free to yeah. ask any questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Dimitri. At the end of the presentation, we will uh, we will summary. We, we will include all the, all the questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Then uh, we give the floor to Stefano, the deployment site leader from uh, Emilia Romana. 
Hello, this is Stefano Nunziata from Co2000 Emilia Romagna. In uh, our deployment site, we um, target the citizens older than 65 that suffered from a stroke with uh, a minor outcome. Um, so people that are usually not followed by the local health authorities. The, um, the activity is located in the province of Parma. Uh, our aim uh, is to improve their quality of life uh, and uh, uh, keep them out of hospital. The idea is to monitor um, changes in, the, in their uh, uh, activities of daily living, uh, monitoring some environmental um, uh, sensors like the, um, the bed, the, the a door, a chair, uh, the toilet usage uh, and the presence in the room and uh, um, uh, pill dispensers to, to monitor the adherence to therapy. Uh, we would like to also to use a smart way scale. <clears throat> There's also a service of uh, video visit by a physiotherapist because people from stroke are suffering uh, need mainly to be uh, monitored on their mobility uh, so we are addressing these uh, services to 60 people. Actually, we are involving 120 older adults because we are doing a, a scientific experiment where uh, 60 of these older adults will be um, a control group. So please go move the slide. Uh, can you change the slide? So um, the architecture is based on uh, um, uh, sewer that collects information from the sensor in the apartment uh, uh, via MQTT. Then uh, everything is stored in the um, uh, so-called fascicolo sanitario elettronico, the electronic health record of the Emilia, Regione Emilia Romagna. Um, and sent uh, anonymized to uh, the IBM Bluemix, where uh, all the partners that deal with data analytics analyze this data to um, intercept a, a possible um, abnormal situation. Uh, the information is then accessed by care and case managers, so the GPs and uh, a case manager that knows uh, the situation of the older people. Uh, there is a possibility to send also SMS to the older people or to his uh, caregiver in case of uh, um, some abnormal situation that requires their attention. It is not intended to be an uh, uh, emergency. Um, uh, so we collect data from these uh, sensors. It's not uh, heavy. Um, it's, uh, it's not a uh, big amount of data coming from each of the users. Uh, then uh, this information is analyzed and uh, transformed into information by the uh, analyt analytics uh, module. We are interested in um, in this uh, challenge to see if there are some um, ideas on how to improve the treatment of these uh, clinic, uh, chronic conditions, uh, always with the aim to help uh, the activity of the um, care and case manager and to improve the to, to keep the uh, the older people out of the hospital. So I will be open to any question you want at the end of the... Thank you very much, Stefano, for the explanation of the deployment. At the end of the presentation, we will give the turn to, to questions, okay? So we move finally to the last deployment site from Germany, uh, Said and Tartarini, the deployment site uh, leader. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Saeed Kazali from uh, Fraunhofer IGD in Germany. Uh, deployment site Vokuaz uh, has four uh, cities where the um, uh, where the solutions are going to be uh, implemented. Uh, these are Rotgau, uh, Stuttgart, Treuchtlingen, and uh, Weiterstadt. Rotgau and Weiterstadt are very close to the Frankfurt Airport. 
Stuttgart should be known. Treuchtlingen is a small town in uh, in the Bavaria uh, state. And uh, everything for us started with some uh, uh, open extensible system that we had already installed in Weiterstadt uh, and uh, the, it had uh, attracted very much attention. Uh, however, the system had this uh, problem that it was uh, a little bit uh, uh, expensive because uh, it was wire technology and so on, and it was not um, also not easy to bring it to uh, not new builds, so existing buildings, we could not replicate it there. So this is why the goal uh, in ActiveAge for us is exactly replicability and affordability of this system that basically uh, provides for uh, assistance at home uh, and it is uh, for also now being prepared for being used in nursing homes there they need naturally also monitoring so this is the next point assistance at home monitoring in nursing homes uh, the basic functionality that we have is we try to automatically recognize different situations, some of them are emergency situations, and try to automatically handle these uh, situations. Um, this is uh, the basic main uh, functionality that we have. If the situation recognized is uh, an emergency situation, then there is an escalation alarm chain uh, that uses the IP telephony, uh, and this is the only user interface uh, in homes. So the telephone uh, is the only user interface uh, that we, are, we have in this system. And um, it, uh, naturally, if uh, after a control call at home, uh, uh, the, uh, the system assumption that something has happened is stronger, then the calls go in the escalation chain to different people, usually the people prefer to have first the neighbors and so on and so on. So this is um, how with the phone call we try to get some help for the people. Um, we have, but we have also at the, uh, this, um, we have at the level of each building some admin and concierge application that uh, is used to um, uh, define which devices are in uh, each uh, flat and uh, uh, the profile of the person living in that flat and things like that. Uh, the same app can also be used as a monitoring application by the nursing homes. These are uh, the mm, uh, uh, these are the so this is the solution provided. We are two organizations uh, uh, from Germany in ActiveAge. But we are doing this with three clients in Rotgau with Johanniter, in Stuttgart with an um, association for buildings for, for, for older people, and in Treuschlingen with Red Cross. We have also four suppliers for different things, uh, uh, components of the system. Um, the two use cases that we are implementing so, one is this uh, emergency situation, uh, handling uh, emergency, and the other one is the um, the comfort and uh, things related to energy consumption and things like that. And um, yeah, we uh, have uh, 100, uh, uh, 106 uh, private flats and uh, 71 private rooms in two care centers. So one care center with 60 uh, private rooms and uh, the other uh, care center with 11 private rooms, but with some also shared areas and so on where the supervisory uh, staff is also there. Next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, yes, one minute, please. Yes, um, the architecture is so that we are um, uh, using the universal platform, no cloud, Every uh, every flat has its own uh, um, Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi, where Universal and the logic of the application, logic of situation recognition and so on is uh, running. Different devices that we uh, have connected from sensors, CO2, humidity, um, presence and, and, and uh, movement, smoke alarm, uh, temperature, 
water usage, ener energy usage uh, are the different kinds of sensors that we have, and we can control the blinds, the door lock, the heating system, lights, uh, outlets, uh, ventilation, and water flow, and uh, <clears throat> also naturally using the phones for, um, for this uh, calling and so on. Uh, this is uh, what we have. Uh, the emergency situations that we are uh, trying to recognize are unusual lung inactivity, uh, no return to bed during night, uh, protracted stay in bathroom. We can say protracted stay in any room. For each room, you can give some uh, amount of time. If uh, without any further activity, the person is staying there, that this can be uh, uh, probably, probably, probably a problem. Prevent shower taking and smoke alarm. These are the different uh, uh, emergency situations, and there are the safety and comfort uh, cases like uh, night light and when the uh, apartment is left, or things like that that we are uh, doing there. Thank you. Said, thank you very much for the explanation. And then uh, we give the turn to the to the people who, that have offered uh, their interest in the, in the open call. And uh, should you have any questions, please include uh, the question in the panel, in the chat, that's right. And uh, we will read each of these questions and uh, uh, answer between all the, the people involved in the, in the open call. Okay, we received the first question from Robert. Who are interested in contributing in the uh, use in the challenge five exercise promotion, balance and physical activity. I think my question is related to the Fleming region Emilia Romana. What age group should the project coverage? And what do you think your users can stand by themselves on a balance board without risking to endure it themselves? Stefano. Allora, the, the user we are um, targeting are user are elder, older people, um, uh, older than 65, with the uh, average, with a mild, um, uh, with mild problems uh, of post-stroke, and they regard mainly mobility. Um, so the your uh, there, there is there is there is a problem uh, about this about uh, um, uh, that they can have a physical problem mainly uh, a part of the body that is not working so it could be a a, a problem to use a balance board alone uh, we plan to have uh, visits from um, uh, of a social health operator or nurses in order to get uh, a video visit that that can be in uh, connection uh, with a physiotherapist. So in that case, it can be probably used this uh, balance uh, board. But only in this case, because alone it could be, um, it should be uh, studied if uh, it's dangerous for the users. Okay. There is another question uh, for all pilots. Uh, are you also looking for new sensors after actuators to install in the pilots? Or the call is only looking for solutions which use the infrastructure already in place? Well, um, uh, good question, but um, basically the, the idea is to include uh, new solutions that um, uh, complement the current AFA services. They can use their own uh, infrastructure uh, and then connect or integrate all this data uh, through 
our interoperability layer or uh, they can connect directly to, to our in, to the each deployment site infrastructure. I don't know if uh, any of the deployment site leaders has any specific requirements related to this part. Um, what uh, this is right, uh, speaking for, from Germany. Uh, what I can say about specific sensors naturally depends on the sensor itself. Uh, if it is really something that will suddenly uh, enable us to, uh, by including the information from this new sensor, to improve our, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, 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 situation recognition, uh, or uh, uh, recognize a new kind of uh, situations and react uh, to them, uh, it could be interesting. So in that case, I would say um, uh, we need really to uh, know about which sensor you are talking, and uh, and then uh, this is one point. The other point is that. Uh, if this sensor is connected to uh, these technology platforms in ActiveAge, to one of them, no matter which one, or the interoperability layer itself um, of ActiveAge, uh, then uh, uh, it is more interesting, even if it is a sensor, because then it will potentially, uh, more pilot sites will potentially be able to uh, to use them. So if the task that you define is, for example, connecting to uh, to platform X of ActiveAge or to this uh, interoperability layer of ActiveAge and testing it in, uh, the, in certain deployment sites, uh, helping there to, I don't know, improve some, uh, some functionality uh, and so on. But then the sensor is really available to uh, all pilot, site, pilot sites. I think this has also a great value. It depends how you present it also. Thank you, uh, Said. Uh, we have, uh, well, I don't know if any other one uh, would like to answer. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will go to the next question that is, what do you expect from the applicant company? Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, just a summary, uh, basically uh, the idea is uh, that uh, you as a third party can present uh, a proposal, uh, respond one of the challenges explained in, in the guide for applicants, and uh, in, uh, complete all the templates that uh, we have shared with all of you, and uh, explain why your solution Respond this challenge and the impact on the on, to the to the activity project. I would suggest Celine uh, to register in our web page, uh, web page and download the guide for applicants and review the documents in, in detail. Uh, and you can see more, more information about about it. Okay. Next question is: um, If two pilot sites use two different platforms. Do we have to use both platforms, or it's better to develop our custom gateway and use our own platform? Well, it's quite technical, specific uh, questions. I uh, can say something about this, if uh, Alicia. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, in ActiveAge, we have created this uh, possibility that it doesn't matter to which one of the uh, platforms that ActiveAge supports, you connect your solution. We can uh, create, uh, we can enable the interoperability uh, over all our platforms so that uh, data and functionality from uh, one uh, from uh, your solution connected to platform one can also be used to by a solution connected to platform two without any effort from your side because we have an interoperability layer between these platforms so let's take the uh, example of uh, i don't know uh, fiverr in italy and our example uh, universal and uh, if you decide to connect to fiverr 
but we are also interested to deploy it here. Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, you are not uh, uh, expected to do a double work for us because the expectation is th that we already enable uh, the ex interaction between the fiber and universal through our interoperability layer so that also in our environment we can uh, get data and functionality from your component that is connected to fiber, for example. Thank you, Say. Uh, and uh, should you want to, to know more about uh, how in, uh, what are the different use cases that we analyze uh, in, the, in this interoperability layer, I would suggest to, to read in detail the technical information document where you can see uh, the different possibilities and the different use cases. But of course, it's something that we have to, to see in detail once um, uh, you decided uh, with which deployment site uh, you will work. Okay, next next question is for deployment site from Greece about uh, four points two of the guide for applicants. It's a little bit difficult to assess or guess a budget for that kind of work since we don't have the re any reference of that specific country. So I was thinking if it would be possible that one of of activates already involved in the challenge in the challenge could could help us in this matter. Mother. Uh, well I don't have a, in front of me the guide of applicants, so I, I'm not I don't know which is the uh, exactly the four point two uh, uh, subsection uh, says. So it's a little bit difficult for me to understand the whole uh, question. I don't know if uh, it is possible to look at the guide of applicants. Yes, uh, let us uh, check and to see in detail uh, during this time. Uh, we will go to the next uh, question and uh, go up. Okay. So we go to the next question that is, uh, can a solution address two use cases, for example, a device monitoring site? and outside the home. Uh, well, I suppose that uh, you are concerning about uh, two cases in terms of two challenges, different challenges. Well, the idea is that uh, you apply only for one challenge, the challenge that you consider that is more aligned with uh, your solutions, because uh, at the end we will um, assigned or prioritize the, the proposals according to uh, all the challenges and trying to, to cover all, all the challenges. So uh, please apply only one challenge for your proposal. Okay. The next question is uh, from Portugal. I'm interested to submit a form to the present activate open call with a development at this moment, this is TRL5 solution. The solution was developed as part of an international project. This result continues in development through international projects funded by Horizon 2020. One of these developed a TRL6 solutions or higher until May 2019. It's a problem to activate call that our application during been four months we work with the uh, here of five solutions. Uh, well, it's true that um, this is one of our uh, key eligibility criteria, uh, but um, uh, due to this, uh, this uh, exception, I would suggest that just to submit the, the proposals and then the experts will analyze this uh, this, uh, this exception and uh, let the uh, experts to decide if uh, it will be a good candidate or not. So uh, from our side, uh, please uh, submit your your solution. Okay. Next question: How can we demonstrate uh, the uh, level of the proposal and solutions? Yes, uh, there is a specific uh, part in the, in the template where you have to include your experience and your background. And the idea is that uh, you could include also 
uh, if uh, you have tested these solutions and uh, include uh, key main results achieved uh, in the, with these solutions till now. Okay, the next question is what kind of sensors are included in the smart home scenarios in the in the deployment side trees? And are you spending contributions on new application platforms that use the collected data? Uh, hello, uh, just to mention the sensors first, there are uh, three types of sensors uh, in the smart home, panic button, uh, motion sensor, and door window sensor. Whereas we have also two uh, medical devices, the blood for blood pressure and the blood glucose device. And um, concerning the second part of uh, the question, uh, we are open to, uh, to any type of suggestions either those that are uh, based on the existing uh, sensors uh, or also to uh, proposals that uh, suggest to add new type of sensors uh, so that they can uh, provide, for instance, uh, environmental monitoring uh, related uh, uh, services, etc. Uh, one clarification that uh, concerning the data management that uh, we have to address, of course, uh, uh, ethics and any issue that has to do with uh, legal uh, requirements, GDPR, etc. Okay. Um, okay. Next question. Uh, what it's an example, and uh, they ask for, for our opinion. The example is uh, based on grid and deployment site. Let's see, say, we want to extend our web application by using data from the sensor that was presented on the presentation. Can we customize our solution based on a IOTES framework in order to use this data? Uh, I think more or less the, the answer is the same as the the one I just uh, mentioned before, the second part. So yes, uh, you can uh, use uh, existing data uh, through the IoT uh, framework as long as uh, ethics and uh, GDPR uh, uh, requirements are addressed. I think also it's mostly clear that um, uh, this enhancement of your application uh, returns something to the uh, deployment zone also. If it's only about enrichment of your application, we thought that uh, that uh, there is a benefit for the older people, uh, for the care personnel, for whatever uh, stakeholders that are involved in the deployment side. Uh, yes, it will become uh, relevant. If it doesn't have anything to do with them and it's an application, a product that would better work having such data, then no, it's not interesting, I think. Thank you, Said. Uh, another question. Uh, if uh, we are asking about uh, the tier uh, level uh, for each single use technology or to, uh, for the whole proposed technology solutions, well, uh, we are not so restrict about it, but basically the idea is the whole proposed solutions, but uh, uh, it's true that uh, maybe the solution could have uh, some part uh, with a lower TRL. So just a broad about uh, the solutions and the testing of the solution in a in a whole in a whole way. Okay. Next question. Um, uh, we are interested in the challenge. Can user authentication solutions? We will like deployment sites from Greece and Germany about different scenarios where they need authentication per users or per class of users. Would an authentication hack with an open API will be sufficient or would you require implementation for specific existing devices? 
if or do I may yes. say something. Uh, um, indeed, we are very much interested in user attribution. I'm not quite sure if we have specified the related challenge as a, uh, a challenge that we are in which we are interested or not. But uh, we are interested in this sense uh, that um, um, we would like to uh, reduce the frequency of explicit authentication. So uh, that the user has to give some name or password and so on. Um, uh, it is a general uh, um, uh, um, interest that we have. Currently, even actually, we do not have uh, any user interface for which we need this, uh, such a feature. But the general idea in which we are very much interested is when, for example, our system is getting that there are two persons in the home, it would be very interesting to be also able to get who they are if what, uh, initially they have been identified. Then, so that you can say person one is Said in, uh, in, in the kitchen and the, per, uh, the other person is, I don't know, uh, Stefano in, uh, in the living room. And, uh, and if uh, we can make this tracking of authentic uh, um, authenticity or uh, um, authenticated uh, persons, uh, so that we reduce the number of explicit uh, login or things like that. That would be very interesting actually for us. Okay, thank you, Said. Uh, well, I don't know if this would like to add any additional comments. Just an important remark these challenges is open for all the deployment side. So, uh, who you, any of you would like to? add any additional comments, but basically the explanation is uh, quite good from from site. Okay, let's move to the next question. Uh, question for deployment sites from Greece about the challenge seven, intelligent environment monitoring and sensing. What do you aim for? I mean a device that has as many sensors as possible, or a device with less sensors but more reliable and personalized to chronic disease to the users. Just uh, previous to, to answer the question from Dimitri, just an important issue. Uh, it's true that uh, all the challenges are quite are described in, in a very open way because we'll give you the opportunity to offer the best and most appropriate solutions that it could be uh, only a one um, sensor, maybe much sensors and, and sensors. This is the idea why uh, we didn't uh, give a lot of details about uh, a strict requirement. So, Dimitri, I don't know if you would like to comment anything about it or. Well, I will agree with you, uh, generally speaking. Uh, if the proposer feels that uh, a solution is better than the other because it's more reliable and is more focused to the needs of uh, the elderly users, then I would go for it. Uh, otherwise, there is no point in uh, just experimenting with no mature solutions or solutions that do not provide uh, real uh, value to the uh, users, being uh, the elderly, the some users, or the formal and informal caregivers. Thank you. Uh, next question is uh, Will there be other open calls in the forthcoming months? Where um, Activate Open Call uh, Activate pretends to have two different open calls. This one is open for SMEs and startups in order to introduce their uh, technology, their IoT solutions. And in the next month, uh, expected in the end of February, uh, beginning of March, we will open a second open call. But uh, this second open call will be uh, with the idea of uh, uh, create new consor consortiums and deploy new 
solutions in another deployment site. Basically, to create a new deployment site in other parts of uh, Europe. Uh, so, in this uh, second open call, we will require not only SMEs, but also local uh, government uh, supply and demand sites. So, it will be more related to consortium. Uh, we will include more information about this second uh, open call in the next uh, in the next weeks. Okay. Uh, next is a uh, guide for applicants uh, 4.2, uh, 4 which codes are you uh, allowed to, to include in your, in your budget. This is linked to the questions that previously uh, maintained. Uh, well, uh, there is a specific uh, section in the, in, the open, in the guide for applicants where you can see all the course, the, the course that you can include in, in your budget. So I don't know if um, you have any specific question about it, but basically uh, I would suggest to read in detail this, um, this section and uh, identify which of them uh, is needed to deploy your solution and to test in each deployment site. Okay? Things like uh, sensors, technology, um, time for the, the deployment, time for the support, and so on. Um, next question. Do you expect us to add more sensors to existing or um, on current sites, or build our proposals using your, our solutions and the sensors on site? Um, well, I may. Uh Yes. May, in my opinion, if uh, we have already, uh, um, for example, motion sensors and your solution needs motion sensors, we do not expect that you install new ones and you, you must use uh, those existing uh, uh, motion sensors in the flats. Uh, but if you need a new type of sensors that we do not have in our uh, environment and it is necessary for your um, uh, solution to work, uh, then naturally you can plan adding those kinds of uh, sensors. This means that in the end also a combination is uh, uh, possible, at least from the perspective of the German uh, deployment side, that for example uh, you are using two types of sensors, one type of them is already available, the other one not. So you just add one that is not available, and uh, this should work. Yes, thank you, Said. Well, basically, it will depend on the type of the challenge and uh, that you will apply. There is uh, one focus on intelligent uh, analytics that, of course, uh, maybe uh, the, the idea is that you could use all the data collected in, uh, by the development side. And maybe there is others that uh, you could uh, or you will need to deploy uh, new sensors in the, in the in the deployment site to collect this information. For example, for the hard written monitoring. So it will be depend on the type of uh, of the challenge that uh, you will apply. Okay, uh, please describe the payment in advance uh, procedure. When this payment will be deposited, is there any obligation after the final payment? Well, uh, the payment procedure is described in the, in the guide for applicants, and you can include in the you can see in the section for budget uh, that uh, you can ask uh, for a, a preliminary uh, payment. That is uh, something like uh, I don't remember the. The, the percentage, but it's something like 75%. Uh, then you have a second uh, payment, uh, intermediate payment, that uh, this is a maximum of uh, 50%, and the rest of the, pay of, the, of the payment will be at the end. All these payments will be associated or condition or conditioned to a uh, uh, several reports reports that uh, you will have to to submit in order to confirm that the 
uh, the project is uh, working properly. Okay. Uh, next question. We would like to know where in the application template we must expand the different cost church in the budget. Well, uh, the application consists on two different parts. One is um, the, the template, it's a Word document. Here you don't have to include uh, the costs, but there is another document that is an Excel where you can you have to include uh, each of each line with uh, the cost associated associated and the budget that uh, you will need for your deployment. In the uh, in our submit, uh, submission uh, uh, portal web that is submittable, you have to upload both documents, Excel one and the Word. Alicia, this question is about uh, where to explain. I think it is clear to the person who has made this question that they uh, they fill in the Excel to give the budget. But in the other documents. Uh, is, uh, uh, is it necessary to explain the different costs uh, charged in the budget or not? If yes, where the explanation must be addressed? This is the question, I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, if you well, open the. No, you don't have to explain in, in detail, just to, to explain in a line. Uh, the different type of of uh, of codes of codes of costs, sorry, uh, the the template in the Excel. You don't have to to give a, a lot of description of of each of them, but but uh, at least the 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 line, uh, for example, one line one one for the deployment. Uh, uh, one other line for technological, another one line for training, other line for travels, and, and so on. We don't need a lot of uh, explanation uh, related to the budget. Okay. I don't know if uh, I answered properly, but okay. Next one. Can we improve and use the interfaces that uh, the deployment the deployment site has, or do we have to implement our own web or, or mobile interfaces? Uh, please, Jose Lopez, I don't know if you can uh, clarify in which you know, which deployment site are you talking about? Because uh, we have four different deployment sites. Well, we move to the next and then we go, we go back. Last question, uh, will this and yesterday webinar be available online in the upcoming days? Yes, we expect to, to upload uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, okay? Okay, uh, the next question. Is for uh, deployment site uh, from Greece. It will be possible that one of the partners of ActiveH already involved in the challenge could help us in the matter of support for installation and user training. Well, uh, previous to to, to her uh, Dimitris, uh, uh, the idea is that uh, we will create an, a special committee for the open call where we will involve. Uh, people from each deployment site and people involved uh, from our technical experts. And the idea is that you could receive uh, support not only from, from the deployment site, but also from the technical uh, expert from, from Activate. Okay? Dimitri, I don't know if you would like to add any additional comment. Um, not really. Uh Actually, the idea is to help uh, the proposers to implement uh, their project. So uh, I guess that we will be glad uh, to provide any help for, again, uh, as, uh, as long as uh, the users are consent on this and we solve any GDPR or uh, ethics related issues. 
I think it's, uh, it's clear. Okay, thank you. And uh, we go back to the questions related to the application uh, to the interfaces. Uh, this is a question for deployment uh, from Greece. Uh, if, uh, the question is, uh, can we improve and use the interfaces that uh, the deployment site has, or do we have to implement our own web or mobile interfaces? I guess it's the decision of the proposer uh, again. Uh, I, uh, it's up to them to decide uh, the best way that uh, they think uh, they should follow in order to successfully implement uh, their project. So they can uh, either use the existing interfaces if these uh, uh, meet their requirements or use their own, uh, develop their own ones. I guess the second is most, I would expect that it will be uh, the typical case because uh, I would expect new services or new, uh, at least graphical user interfaces to be uh, created. Yes, thank you. Okay, another question. Can SMEs participate in the call uh, in the next March uh, one you mentioned, uh, consortium? Uh, yes, uh, the SMEs uh, can participate, but uh, the most important is that uh, they don't have, they don't, uh, they cannot participate in an independent way, like in this uh, open call. The idea is to be in, in, in co coordination with uh, the rest of the stakeholders supply, uh, demand sites, uh, um, so we expect to define previously how to develop the best, how to develop uh, the best uh, networking between all of uh, potential SMEs and uh, local uh, government and uh, industry or big companies and uh, uh, it's something that we have to define and we will, we will maintain you informed about how are we going to proceed in order to facilitate that you can create the consortium. So the key point is that uh, we are asking uh, for a new deployment site created by a consortium, okay? So we will develop different channels in order to facilitate the communication and coordination in order to create the consortium, uh, to facilitate creating the proposal and to submit, okay? Alicia, I think you skipped one question was about uh, could we get in contact with specific DS to clarify the needs according to C10. I think you skipped this one. This is the uh, user authentication solution where all uh, DSs are interested in it. And uh, the question is, if uh, Dimitri is making this question, could we get in contact with specific DS to clarify the needs according to the challenge definition? Yes. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Said. In the challenge 10, we have uh, uh, involved all the deployment sites. All the deployment sites are interested in the, in the solutions that uh, you could create. In this case, uh, I, I will suggest not to have a direct contact to each deployment site. I will suggest to send us your questions or the things that you would like to know about each deployment site using our email that uh, we send you, uh, uh, in the, I will include it in the, in the panel. Okay, so please uh, send us your email and we will uh, facilitate uh, your, your questions or, your, or the, the information that you require. We will, we will share with the different uh, deployment sites and collect and share, uh, share to you, okay? So, I don't know if uh, we will have any 
Any additional questions? I have Alicia my question because I had forwarded yeah. the open call naturally to all my contacts and someone has asked me uh, he is uh, working only as a freelancer he does not have any company in that sense but he has uh, some application idea that he has already implemented but uh, it's not really very much tested and so on so the question was if uh, someone as a freelancer uh, wants to is it possible that someone as a freelancer not as an organization uh, attends the open call or not well uh, I tell you the same as other institutions uh, that are not profit or research uh, institutions. Uh, what uh, I will tell you is if they have if they have an idea, if they have a, a good solution, uh, they can present if they uh, are startups or using a startups or, or SMEs uh, to present their solution. Okay. So he cannot uh, do that personally, he must find a company or create a company with which he can make this. Yes, yes the, the idea is that uh, it's a very specific uh, uh, situation. Uh, we must do to see it there, but basically, if uh, they are registered as a SMEs, as a small SME, we can. We can apply, okay, or, or to, to to present together with a uh, with an SME and the uh, SME ask for for the funding, okay. Okay. So um, thank you very much uh, for your time uh, and for your interest uh, interest in the in the open call. Uh, we will update all this uh, information in the. In, in our web page. And um, should you have any, any questions uh, or comments, please uh, share it with us in, in our uh, email. And uh, well, uh, just to remind you that uh, the deadline for the open call is uh, 31st of October. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.